On today's episode of Insights from the Farm, we're going to dig into this very dry fall and how that's going to impact fall anhydrous applications. We'll also take a look at two success stories from farmers in the Midwest who replaced a portion of their nitrogen programs with Proven 40 and saw great yield results. Stay tuned. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Insights from the Farm. I'm your host, Rick Myrup, and I'm joined as always by the agronomic expert of our dynamic duo, Dr. Ryan Van Ruckel. On today's episode, we're going to be digging into a historically dry fall and how that's going to impact potential fall anhydrous applications. We're also going to dig into how using Proven 40 as a new mode of action in nitrogen can mitigate the risks associated with that dry fall. After that, we'll jump into a couple of real-world examples from farmers that replaced a portion of their nitrogen programs with Proven 40 and saw impressive yields as they went. First things first, Dr. Ryan Van Ruckel, as of 1020, the USDA has said 65% of all the corn is out of the ground, 81% of soybean, and 44% of cotton. All of those are about 16 to 14% over what the five-year average is. Can you remember any harvest progressing this quickly? You know, I remember a few that were quite a sprint, uh, but certainly this one snuck up on us. You know, if we remember back to spring, there was a lot of rain early in the year. And, and so there was a lot of later planted, too. And, and it's just surprising that as the season went on, uh, you know, we got plenty of heat. Things dried out late and the crop was able to come mature and dry down really quickly here. So they folks were able to get a lot earlier of a start than they were planning on. And then we've had a really long window here, too, without rain. So there's really nothing to slow them down. And these modern farmers with uh, big equipment, they're very efficient. They can they can just get so much done in such a short amount of time when they when they put in the long hours, which they've done. And uh, it, it is really surprising how fast things have gone. Yeah, it's been crazy. You know, I've, I've heard a lot of stories of guys that really haven't taken a day off uh, for for almost a month now. They've just been cruising along. That's right. That's right. You got to make hay when the sun shines, as they say. And uh, when you get a good window like this, you know, it, it's such a blessing to be able to do harvest and have those big, heavy grain carts and semis. But you're not worried about leaving tracks in the field and causing compaction. And, and it's been a really good window here. Now, the only trouble is it's gotten maybe a little too dry, too. So, uh, you know, there's been some red flag warnings, you know, folks worried about fires. Uh, uh, the corn stalks really drying down. Soybeans got a little too dry to um, actually going a, a little too far where it's causing a little bit of a harvest challenge here because it's been so dry lately. Yeah, you know, Ryan, it's been almost historically dry when you think about how this fall has gone. And I saw this tweet come out from NASA where they showed just what, how dry the soil has been and how, how it's going to look over the next couple of weeks here with the forecast. And, and this image really set ag social media ablaze. And you saw a lot of conversation happening around this because there are a lot of implications around the soil being that dry as we move into harvest and as people start to think about their fall and hydrous applications. Yeah, when we get into conditions that are this dry, it could cause some serious issues with fall and hydrous application. So when you apply that, you really need the soil to seal behind you. Like it's got to have good soil conditions like when you're planting. And when it's this dry... You can have trouble where the soil comes up in chunks and cracks and it doesn't fall back into place and that anhydrous can escape to the air. You could literally lose your nitrogen right as you're applying it if you don't get it to seal very well behind it. You know, even if you do sock it down deep, that helps a lot. But the soil so dry that you need that water to take the ammonia and convert to ammonium, that pocket of ammonia is just going to expand even further and potentially leak out the top too. Um, we, we've seen that a lot. Folks are familiar with that with spring applications and burning roots. When it's this crazy dry, it, it can it can move so far in the soil that it can creep out the top as well. Well, some of those risks you're putting out there, Ryan, that's that's some of the reason that we always talk about the need to have multiple modes of action as a part of your nit nitrogen and fertility plan, right? Yeah, that's right. I think it's important to be flexible on your nitrogen plans and to diversify where you can. So. I think about somebody that wants to put on 100% of their nitrogen in the fall, and if they really force it on and have poor application conditions, you know, they could have a train wreck on their hands come next fall. Can you move a portion of that nitrogen to the spring or in season or at planting? And, you know, a lot of folks don't have that nitrogen application equipment, but the great thing about Proven 40 is that you can put it on while you're planting. 
And so it saves you a step there. It is a diverse new mode of action. It's nitrogen fixed on the roots. It's not going to wash away. It's not going to volatilize to the air. Uh, it fits into a situation like this too. It allows you to be more flexible, gives you some peace of mind. You know, Ryan, as we talk about multiple modes of action in nitrogen and how that can mitigate your risk, you know, that played out this season in two ways. We're talking about how dry it is this fall, looking forward to crop 25. And we also had an exceptionally wet spring. Now, we saw some tremendous results all through season, and we're seeing those pay off at harvest. Our first example here is from Union City, Michigan, and we saw a replacement of nitrogen with Proven 40. We saw great results all through the season that indicated the crop was doing better. And then at harvest, as the combine ran, we saw it paid off in yield. Yeah, that's right. Our territory sales manager, Brenda Marshall, was able to share this example with us, and, and she pulled together a bunch of great pictures. You know, they did it right by just replacing a portion of that side dress. So that's something to think about as you're setting up trials or, or checks for next year. It's important to not replace an entire side dress pass and do like 40 pound side dress versus zero. You know, and the reason for that is our microbes are down there. They're fixing at, at most about a half a pound of nitrogen per day. And when you side dress, that can be a 40 pound st shot of steroids that if the corn really needs it, like if you had a really wet rain or something, it can just totally mask the effect of the microbes. And so it, it makes for a little bit of variable results in the comparison. So I really like what they did there where it was 55 pounds at side dress versus 25 pounds at side dress. Yeah, it really speaks to the benefit of that multiple modes of action again, right? You're you're hitting it with a big dose uh, with the side dress, and then you're also spoon feeding it throughout the season with something like Proven 40. Yeah, it's a great one-two punch. You know, they, they complement each other well. And the other nice thing that, that Brenda and the rep made sure to do was they made sure they only replaced nitrogen and not another nutrient like sulfur. You know, a lot of folks are tank mixing sulfur in with their liquid 32% or 28% UAN. And so that's a hard thing to do sometimes. It, it, to do it right, it's very important to get a load of just straight nitrogen to make that replacement. Or our agronomists are, are well trained on how to make a hot mix too, where maybe you're a 90-10 blend of 90% nitrogen, 10% sulfur. For the check, maybe you go to an 80-20 in the replacement range, 80% nitrogen, 20% sulfur. You try to get the same amount of sulfur, even if you're replacing a little bit of nitrogen. And that's really important for the corn. The corn needs that sulfur to be able to utilize the nitrogen wherever that's coming from. Yeah, that's one of the benefits of uh, working with your local Pivot Bio rep is they're able to help talk you through some of these scenarios and help you really think about your fertility plan holistically mm -hmm. so you're maximizing that corn's potential. Special thanks to Brenda on this one. The, these are fantastic stories. Love when we can follow the crop all the way through season. You know, it's great to be able to see those indicators early in the year, see that bigger root mass, be able to understand biomass. You can see it happening in the field. And then when it pays off at harvest with that yield, it's, uh, it, it all really comes together nicely. Yeah. And I want to, I want to give props again to Brenda and them for setting up a really good comparison here. When you start talking about side dress replacements, you need to be a little careful uh, with that. You see at side dress timing, the corn is taking up a tremendous amount of nitrogen, more than our microbes can fix. And so it is important to complement with some nitrogen fertilizer and side dress is a really efficient, good time to do there. And so what we would prefer is to do like Brenda did and just replace a portion of your side dress and not compare side dress versus zero nitrogen at that. that that's something that um, can result in a little bit of variable things there. Uh, you know, and the other part of that is is a lot of side dress. A lot of this is liquid nitrogen. This, in this case, it was wide drop uh, UAN. A lot of folks mix sulfur with that too. And sulfur is very important for the corn plant. You need, you know, roughly a 10 to 1 ratio, maybe even 8 to 1. The corn plant needs sulfur to go with that nitrogen, whether it's nitrogen for fertilizer or nitrogen that the microbes are fixing. And so it's really important to pay attention to that. We need to make sure that we're not replacing sulfur as well to keep things fair and honest. You know, it's almost as if there's a theme here today, right? Uh, talking about the benefits of multiple modes of action, being able to use side dress along with a spring application or even a fall application and supplementing that with the spoon fed nitrogen that comes from using Pivot Bio's Proven 40. Using all those together really mitigates a farmer's risk. Yeah, that's right. And we've got another great example from Missouri to highlight that. Kyle Besgrove was able to work with Bright Family Farms and put together a really nice story for us here too. Uh, Jordan Bright shared with us that they replaced 40 pounds of nitrogen last year and they had a seven bushel advantage. Now that is proven 40 at minus 40 pounds versus the untreated at the full at plus 40. 
and we saw a yield bump there. Now, normally we'd expect the same yield, uh, but in this case, we got higher yield. And we think last year it was really dry and they normally do top dress urea. And when they laid that urea on top, it just never got rained in. And so that nitrogen down there on the roots fixing every day made a really big difference last year. And so this year uh, they went 100% on their farm, but they did leave a couple checks, uh, mostly when they ran out of treated seed and had to finish a farm. And so when they checked that this year, they just got through that, uh, came out a six bushel advantage there too. So uh, another great example in Missouri where, where Pivot Bio can, can help in uh, help diversify your nitrogen program. Yeah, and I, I think that this is a, a great example. And, and Jordan was so kind as to, to actually send us in a video as he was harvesting, talking about using Proven 40. Let's let's let Jordan tell us for himself just how uh, how excited they were about the performance this year. Last year we did a check of Pivot Bio on some acreage. The yield was about eight years full acre, while better. This year we did it over several more acres. Yeah, with the flexibility of Pivot Bio and where our nitrogen program is, allows us to reduce our nitrogen and, and still achieve the yields that we have seen as much. Always great to hear directly from farmers how products are working for them and, and really excited that uh, adding Proven 40 to the mix at Bright Farms has paid off for them. Yeah, it's great seeing and hearing that from Jordan and really appreciate it for sending in that video. Oh, we love hearing these results and, and it's great to see how our products can help farmers diversify their nitrogen program and find success year after year. You know, in their situation, they, they had tremendous success in a dry year. And fast forward to this year with a lot more rain early, they're still having good luck. So uh, I really appreciate that. Yeah, Ryan, really excited to see those results from Bright Farms and appreciate Jordan for sharing that with us so that we can talk about that here on the podcast. That's going to wrap us up for this episode of Insights from the Farm. We'll be back next week with more real world success stories and agronomic expertise from Dr. Ryan Van Ruckel about how you can maximize your nitrogen fertility plan as you think about crop year 25. If you'd like to follow along and see how farmers just like you in your local area are having success using Proven 40 this season, you can visit our harvest landing page at www.pivotsprovenit.com to see both state and national results for farmers that are replacing portions of their nitrogen program with Proven 40. You can also follow along on social media by searching the hashtag ProvenIt so that you can see real-time stories from farmers on social media. Until next time, stay safe out there, and we'll see you with more insights from the farm.